I can't stand this. Whoa, that is so much better. Oh, anyways, you can now improve performance rendering with content visibility auto. CSS properties can now be set in CSS. You can now check if your Windows app or PWA is installed. Origin trials for web hid and fetch upload streaming have started and lots more. I'm Pete LePage. Let's dive in and see what's new for developers in Chrome 85. Turning your HTML into something that the user can see requires the browser to go through a number of steps before it can even paint the first pixel. And it does this for the whole page, even for content that isn't visible in the viewport. Applying content visibility auto to an element tells the browser that it can skip the rendering work for that element until it scrolls into the viewport, providing a faster initial render. To get the most impact out of content visibility, apply it to parent sections with more complex layout algorithms like Flexbox and Grid, or that have children with their own contained layouts. By chunking content and adding content visibility auto, this page went from a rendering time of 232 milliseconds to only 30 milliseconds. Check out the content visibility post on web.dev to see how you can use it to improve your rendering performance. CSS variables, technically called custom properties, are awesome. With the Houdini CSS properties and values API, you can define a type and default fallback value for your custom properties. I previously covered them in New in Chrome 78 when we added support for defining them in JavaScript. Starting in Chrome 85, you can now also define and set CSS properties directly in your CSS. What I love about CSS properties is that it gives the property semantic meaning, fallback values, and even enables CSS testing. Yuna has a great post on web.dev and shows you how you can use them to animate a gradient, something that until now has been hard to do. The Get Installed Related Apps API makes it possible for you to check if your app is installed, then customize the user experience. For example, show different content to the user on a landing page if your app is already installed. Centralize overlapping functionality in one app to prevent confusion. Or if your native app is already installed, don't promote the installation of your PWA. When it first shipped in Chrome 80, it only worked for Android apps. Now, on Android, it can also check if your PWA is installed. And on Windows, it can check if your Windows UWP app is installed. Check out my article on web.dev to see how it works and how to sign your apps to prove that they're yours. In Chrome 84, we added support for app icon shortcuts. I accidentally said they were available everywhere, but they were available only on Android. Sorry. Now, in Chrome 85, they're available on Android and Windows, and in both Chrome and Edge. Check out the article on web.dev for more details. Starting in Chrome 85, Fetch Upload Streaming is available as an origin trial. It lets you start a fetch before the request body is ready. Previously, you could only start a request once you had the whole body ready to go. But now, you can start sending content even while you're still generating it. For example, use it to warm up the server or stream audio or video directly as it's captured from the camera or microphone. Jake has an in-depth look on web.dev with ways that you can use it to improve performance and memory. And of course, there's plenty more. Promise.any returns a promise that is fulfilled by the first promise to either be fulfilled or rejected. Replacing all instances in a string is easier with replace all, no more regular expressions, and app cache removal has begun. All the details, including links, docs, and specs, are in the updates post linked in the description. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Pete LePage, and as soon as Chrome 86 is released, I'll be right here to tell you what's new in Chrome.